All right, everybody, welcome to your third WordPress theme development tutorial. My name is Mehul, and in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how files are laid down in a WordPress website so that you can actually familiarize yourself with how things are laid down in WordPress. So, if we look at the file system, as you remember that we installed WordPress in this WP folder, so this WP folder contains these few files and these three folders so this STA access is a file which runs every time a request is made to your server and this file is pretty much responsible for what you pretty much call it as pretty URLs so if you look right here inside your settings and permalinks you can see that Pretty much WordPress allows you to have different sort of URLs for a same sort of post. So for example, like you can have this simple plain URL with a query parameter or with customized date and time, month and display and all that stuff. So all of this stuff can be managed by making use of this ST access file and WordPress pretty much, I guess, does that as well. So this is that file then index.php contains some crucial code for your index page like it contains code whether to what to do with the post loading how to style them how to place them which tags should contain the post title and all that stuff then license.txt is just a, a license for the gpl license for wordpress so you might want to read this out if you wish to well I don't then there's a readme.html there's all of the stuff I don't think we need this as well then this is WP activate we don't need this file actually but let it be so this is WP blog header then all of these file names are self-explanatory the comments post the configuration this file is important because it holds the configuration of your database interaction so anything you know if you mess up with this file you would probably end up with something like this so never ever mess with this file and even if you are then make sure you just back up this file before even starting messing with this so then this is WP cron cron jobs so that you can just delay posting or something like that you know WordPress offers that sort of thing then this is some other file WP links and uh, pretty much so not that much important then WP load then WP login is the login page which you see then this might be the mail file which would be used to mail people or your users about their user details like login information if you have registrations open then WP sign up would be a registration page track back would be a track back script for like if somebody comments with your URL you will get a track back then this is XML RPC I don't know this is all sort of SEO stuff sort of thing so you might want to take a look at that well for our WordPress theme development purposes mostly these three folders are important so WP admin as discussed would not be very much useful for us because it contains only content for the administration purposes so you don't actually need it unless you your theme is looking for modification in administrator area as well then WP content contains currently two folders which is the plugin one and the themes one so the plugin one would be used in the tutorial series in which I'm gonna teach you about how to program plugins for WordPress but since this one is for themes so this is kind of more important for us so this themes folder you can see that we have got three folders and this index.php is nothing but a simple redirect and not even redirect because the written silence is golden because if you don't have this index.php then if somebody just goes to see XAMPP or your website you're in in case localhost wp wp content themes then 
there would be a directory transversal which would just reveal how many themes you have right now and all that stuff so just adding a simple blank index.php file pretty much does that job that the directory listing is not revealed so these three folders pretty much if you just go to this themes you can see that these are the th three themes right here you can see and they are the exactly same names so one thing we get from here is that you have to actually paste in your theme URL or sorry you have to actually paste whatever theme you're creating right here to make it appear here so in WordPress you can see this is add new theme but it doesn't allow you to add your own theme you can just upload it so what we can do is actually just create a new folder in here and let's just say this or let's just say my first theme and hit enter and reload pretty much nothing appears because you can see that here is the error it says broken themes the following themes are installed but incomplete it says that style sheet is missing so what you can do is go to your style.css just create this blank file reload you can see that we get some sort of under another error that template is missing standalone themes need to have an index.template php file so whoa. Uh, this would be index.php and reload again and you can see that we get a sort of blank theme in between and this pretty much means that we don't have any thumbnail for our theme or any sort of description neither the name a custom name we do have a name but this is just taking from the folder one so we need to work upon this theme and if I activate this theme and go to my website nothing appears because my index.php file is actually empty so WordPress doesn't know what to do on home page so that's where programming part comes in and that's where we program WordPress themes so whatever we are gonna do for next tutorials some tutorials would be inside this folder so this folder would allow us to code WordPress themes and pretty much make some awesome themes as well and obviously better than these so if you like this video tutorial then don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you then in the next one with some real programming starting off so till then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching